up, Jello Makers? Welcome into another movie commentary Monday. Delighted to have you here today. Very special one. I've been looking forward to this movie commentary Monday for quite some time. I enjoy movies, but I enjoy movies so much more when I get to experience it with you guys. So not only have I held off on watching this, I've been trying to avoid conversations about this movie, despite the fact that everyone's talking about it all the time. Oh, it's, it's under two hours too? Oh, nice. That's like the sweet spot. I should also say, come in for a moment. Just come, come. Actually, hold on, hold on, go back out, go back out, go back out. Yeah, okay. Okay, come back, come back. I'll say this every now and again, and it's been a while since I've said it. So for everybody who's, uh, who's relatively new, just to give you a heads up, this channel is all about having a fun time. We're just gonna watch movies, we're gonna laugh, we're gonna crack some stupid jokes, and we're gonna have a blast doing it. If you are here for, uh, like, social commentary or you know, the, the messaging of a film, a man, not here. That is not me. But if you're just looking to have a good time, oh, you couldn't pick a better place, baby. Money. I can only buy or rent it for $25? No? 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 All right, I guess I we we ha I, like I, it's five dollars, right? Hey, yeah, twenty five dollars to rent a movie is ridiculous. At least I get to own it forever, you know. Oh, that's that's worse. Oh, it's in the threes, also known as the thirties for people who have a lot of money. For me, that's just the threes. <laughs> All right, I don't care. I'm in the threes, but I don't care. Let's go, baby! Oh, a pink, cause Barbie, guys, huh? No one else noticed that, I bet. They made it pink. Cause Barbie, no one noticed it but me. I should make an Easter egg video. <laughs> All right, here we go. God, it, ah, that's grainy. That is grainy. YouTube movies, get your stuff together. I paid in the threes for this movie. I paid for Ultra HD and you're giving me 480? This is actually my first Barbie movie ever. I hope, I hope I don't, I hope I don't need lore. The vast deserts at sunset. Since the beginning of time, since the first little girl ever existed, there have been dolls. That's not a fact. That's not a true fact. Since the first girl ever existed, dolls existed, there's no way. I guess maybe like they piled rocks together and they're like, oh, look at this little living thing. But they're cavemen, so they'd probably be like, <laughs> and then the little girl would be like, <laughs> which is my impression of cavemen speak. Ah, oh, she's pissing herself. That's frightening. A giant woman? A giant woman. What are you doing to that baby? No, that's a baby. Oh my god. That that doll baby has brain damage forever now. This woman's gonna grow up and do this to a real child at some point. Look at that anger. Oh my god. Oh! She's she's gonna be the worst. She's a serial killer. Now nah, she's smiling. She's encouraging serial killer behavior. Cry. Oh my god. Just a generation of serial killers. Casey Anthony's probably watching this movie being like, Yes, finally, something I can relate to. That might be the darkest joke I have ever made on this channel. Let me know in the comment section if that was too far. Cause uh, I'm 50-50 split on it right now. Jesus Christ, that was dark though. <laughs> oh my God. Barbie changed everything. Okay, let's get into this movie. She changed it all again. She changed it, yeah. We're getting away from the joke. She might have started out as just a lady in a bathing suit, but she became so much more. Like a tennis player. And this has been reflected back in the real world. Okay. Thanks to Barbie, all problems of feminism and equal rights have been solved. At least, that's what the Barbies think. I'm gonna keep it transparent. I don't know what the plot of this movie is, and I feel like I just got a glimpse now. So Barbie Land is a place. It's its own country, separate from the real world. And I think Barbie goes to the real world, right? Living her best day every day. Okay, that's cool as hell. And here is one of those Barbies now. <laughs> oh, this is cool as hell. Hey, wait, wait, where's the privacy? There's no what? There's not even glass here. You just sleep with an eye shot of your neighbors? Are like oh, you shower without walls too? You can get, oh, there's, there's pregnant Barbies? Well, let's not show me actually. She was discontinued as a pregnant doll. It's just too weird. That's what I'm saying. It wouldn't be weird if you could like artificially, no, you don't want children like reaching up into a, Reaching up inside and pulling a little baby out. That's that's like traumatic. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ryan. There are no multiples of Alan. He's just Alan. Confused about that. Michael Sarah in every role is Michael Sarah. There's no like falling into a role. There is you you cast Michael Sarah to be Michael Sarah in your movie. I'll beach off with you any day, Ken. Let's beach off. Anyone who wants to beach him off has to beach me off first. I will, I... I will beach you off. And beach sounds like beat. I mean, is it just me being 30? 
Well, that's not funny. And then the, the joke is like they keep saying it. Anyone who wants to beach him off has to beach me off first. I will beach both of you off at the same time. That's just... Uh, but you don't even know how to beat yourself off. How are you going to beat uh, both of us off? Nah. Nah. You're very brave, Ken. I saw this scene. This is posted to Twitter. I saw this. And what a good job you do at Beach. You should heal up in no time. Actually, <laughs> there's just, I love him. It, there's just not a thing going on in his head. Maybe it's because I relate to him. Just nothing. Just It's just like an empty whirring. Just the sound of like wind through mountain peaks. Like that's the sound. Not a single pot in there. It is the best day ever. And so is yesterday. And so is tomorrow. And so Barbies are, they're constantly having the best day ever. Do they have feelings like do they have like a happiness do they have sadness right Gosling Ken he has jealousy but if every day is the best day ever then every day is the same which would be sad and bad and no good I don't know I don't know everything about dying I don't know why I just said that okay now we have a plot I was that that's that's exactly the thing I was talking about you can go now I thought I might stay over tonight to do what I'm actually not sure <laughs> I don't want you here. Barbie's dream house. It's not Ken's dream house. Ha ha ha, right as always. <laughs> God damn it, Ryan Gosling is so good. Every night is girls' night. Mm -hmm. Every night. Uh oh. Oh! Oh, she's growing disenchanted. Is it is it gonna be a punishment? Is she gonna be ejected from Barbie World? Because she's not picture perfect happy all the time? Oh yeah, she she's fine. She's not fine. She didn't get a good night's sleep. That much is evidence. And I think what would have helped is if she would have just tried Beam, Dream Powder. This video is sponsored by Beam. A new poll recently published out of Forks, Washington. They asked around and they found that nearly 85% of all people sleep. And according to those 85% that do sleep, they all said that at some point in their lives, they have struggled to sleep. Beam could help. Beam is a calming, soothing drink that you drink right before bed. And it helps you not only fall asleep, but it helps you stay asleep as well for all you restless sleepers out there. Now, of course, Beam sent me their product to try before I agreed to work with them. And I wasn't expecting a great taste just because when something is good for you or when something has like positive effects on your life, I just assumed that there's a trade-off, but I was okay with that. If it was gonna help me get better sleep, I'm okay taking that trade. So I warmed up some water, put a scoop in, stirred it with a spoon. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Beam, tasty as hell. I would drink this all day if it didn't make me sleepy. And since I started drinking Beam, which I'll do about three to four nights a week, I've noticed that my sleeps are a lot heavier and then I wake up a lot more refreshed. There's like not as much grogginess in the morning for me. Head to shopbeam.com slash Dylan is in trouble. The link will be in the description, of course. When you subscribe, you're gonna get 20% off, but you also get an extra 15% off when you use the code trouble. And not only that, they throw in a free frother. They didn't even send me a frother and you get one for free. You can pause, skip deliveries or cancel anytime so you can rest easy there. Fun. You can rest easy, get it? Because Beam helps you rest. So if you're trying to find a way to get some better sleep, head down to the description, click the link. And don't be like Barbie when she woke up uh, a little bit ago, for, when she was disheveled and um, like groggy in the morning. Just to just to uh, tie that tie that segue together, you get what I was doing. Okay. <laughs> Thank you to Beam for sponsoring. <gasps> oh. oh. My feet. Oh, oh no. What is it? What is it? Does he have a finish? She's like, my feet! And he's like, let me get a good look at those buggers. She's losing her barbiness. Is she gonna be ejected from Barbie World? Black feet! <laughs> oh, don't pretend like you don't like it. Don't pretend. Stop it, Ken. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He, he took it too far. He's like, oh, I got caught looking at her feet before. Let me pretend like I'm really grossed out by them. Blah. Can't wait to think about these feet later. Blah. You know, you're gonna have to visit Weird Barbie. Oh, who's Weird Barbie? She used to be the most beautiful Barbie of all, but then someone played with her too hard in the real world. Oh. Oh, oh okay, okay. When I heard someone say I played with her too hard, I, I, I'm, oh, oh, I have a darker brain than most, I think. Wait, so these Barbies are those Barbies? But those lovers are in the real world? Welcome to my weird house. You've opened a portal. Oh. Hey guys, I'm gonna explain the exposition of this film quickly. So a portal has opened up between Barbie land and the real world. And the girl in the real world who's playing with Margot Robbie's Barbie body, her feelings are being transferred over to Margot Robbie in this world. So now Margot has to go to the real world to cheer that depressed bitch up. They do this matrix red pill, blue pill joke, which is pretty good. Weird Barbie is like, you can either stay in this world and forget everything, or you can learn the truth and see reality for what it is. And Barbie is like, 
I will choose to forget everything, please. Which is the wrong choice, and that's funny. It's a good joke, which is important to note because some of the time, some of these jokes, 50-50 hit miss ratio. That joke of like, hey, there's there's two options. I like that. That's a good joke structure. I just wish someone could come with me. What bird am I thinking of? Parrot, dolphin. I mean, no, a bird. See, yeah, that I. Uh, <laughs> Come on. What bird am I thinking of? Dolphin! He needs, literally, he's thinking like, I gotta get away from that terrible joke. So he's gonna literally leave his world to escape that joke. I think we should get some different clothes. Where do they get the money? Do they have money? How do they, did they, uh, did they rob? You guys gotta pay for that stuff. Ah. What, they're into thievery? You're supposed to be a good role model? And you thieve? From small businesses? I just need to clear my mind so I can think. Playing with me. I hate it when people think. I get so bored. Faster. <laughs> uh, I'm so excited. Hey, listen, I, I knew that the setup of this film was going to take a minute. We're now setting into the plot. I, I can't tell you how excited I am for this portion of the film. Oh, whoa, whoa. She's ha she has visions of the little girl. Oh, I hope it's something heartwarming. Like her mom just died or Okay. Let me expound upon that, because that sounded like the opposite of what I was saying. I hope it's heartwarming in that her mom just died or something. And then the Barbie can console her and be a mother figure for her. And that's the heartwarming part. Not the death of the mother. It's just so we're same page, you and I. Oh, look at all these magical memories. Oh, look at this. That's a hug. That's a look, look, I have medical expenses on the table because I just found out I have an incurable disease. That's that kind of hug. Yes, she feels it. I know she feels it. Oh, she grew up without a mom. This is a foster mom. Yeah, don't touch her. You're not my real mom. Don't touch me, fake mom. I miss my medical bill mom. Yeah, she feels it. She feels it. You could be her no mom. That felt achy, but good. But good. That felt achy, but good. She's happy to see the medical bill mom die. <laughs> oh, she's an empath. <laughs> Very strange part of the film I found right here. I feel like we should talk about this. So office worker Bill here, which is not his name, but do you care? Office worker Bill gets a call from the FBI saying that there are two Barbies on the loose and they at Mattel need to take care of it. So office worker Bill leaves his desk and he goes up to tell the CEO of the situation. Now that sounds like it would happen very quickly, right? After all, we don't care about this random plain looking man. No offense to him. Just like everybody watching this video, close your eyes and then tell me one feature about the man you just saw. You can't do it. Pl very plain. Instead of him quickly going up to the boardroom to deliver the news, we watch him talk to his co-workers about going to the boardroom. We watch him get in the elevator going up to the boardroom. We watch him talk to the secretary outside of the boardroom, which admittedly this is small, but it does have value. But then we see plain men open the doors to the boardroom and hesitate at the foot of the boardroom. And then he says he has urgent business for the boardroom. And then the CEO and plain men go back and forth for a bit before plain men decides to whisper the news of the Barbies on the loose to the men at the end of the table where they then whisper it around the table until they finally tell the CEO. Okay, this part, this part is really long. All of that should have taken 30 to 45 seconds. Get the call, blow past the secretary, open up the doors, say the thing. Instead of 30 seconds, it's three minutes. That doesn't sound long, but when you have the magnetic presences of Margot and Goss, you're burning runtime being away from them. They are the light of this universe, and I don't like the dark. If this got out that our dolls were coming to Los Angeles from Barbie Land as life-size versions of themselves, you would make so much money. This would be very bad. Oh, no. Oh, that's the opposite. If you told me I could buy a doll, whether it be like an, a doll or like an action figure of some sort, and there was a potential that that doll would come searching for you with Positive feelings, hopefully. <laughs> like you wouldn't want to get like a Darth Vader action figure and then all of a sudden it's in our world looking for you. <laughs> but you would sell so many dolls if that was a possibility. Barbie in the real world. Is she? That's impossible. Is she the Is she the one that had the dolls? Is she the one that, uh, she, the, that Barbie's searching for? Before, we saw like a time jump of the, the girl being a child and then she was a teenager. So there's like a, a large elapse a lapsing of time. So that could have been like 10 years ago when she was like going to school, whatever that was. And now 10 years later, she's working for Mattel. Drawing Barbie, we saw the drawings. That was uh, the things that Barbie was wearing, thinking of death. So she might be the one that she's searching for. The horse. I've oh, wait, no, no, no. Maybe she is looking for a teenager. Damn it, I had my theory. I thought it was a secretary. Oh, damn it. <laughs> now my theory just crumbled entirely. What's up? <laughs> 
We haven't played with Barbie since we were like five years old. You represent everything wrong with our culture. Unrealistic, physical ideals. No, no, no. You destroy girls' innate sense of worth and you are killing the planet with your glorification of rampant consumerism. <laughs> You're getting thrashed by this child. They're gonna allow this Barbie? Where's aggressive Barbie? Where's UFC fighter Barbie? Maybe you should have brought her instead of Goss. I haven't thought about you in years, you fascist. Oh my god. Thrashed. Although when I did, I did, I did say bring UFC Barbie, so I, I was implying that you should have sicked UFC Barbie on to this child. But hey, it's film, baby. A child gets beat up, it's just, it's just entertaining. Why didn't Barbie tell me about patriarchy? I'll go back to Barbie land and I'll tell the Kens what I've learned. Hi, bunny boo-boo. Don't call me. Ah, oh, there's a connection. This is your foster mom. Your real mother died. I think that part might not be right as well. I'm slowly sinking into uh, the realization that I've just crafted an entire world that is untrue. She thinks she's Barbie. What are you doing? Mom, Mom, get back in the car. Why would you try to chase a leaving vehicle on foot? You got out of your fast moving contraption to get on your slow moving legs to chase another fast moving contraption. Logically, think about that. Oh, you didn't catch up to them? That's so weird. Would you like some mineral water? Oh. <laughs> That's funny. Get into the box and you'll go back to Barbie land. Could I just meet the woman in charge? Oh, that would be me. You're COO. Here. President of the Barbie division. President. I'm a man with no power. Does that make me a woman? Oh, God. All right. When I watch films, I, I completely separate them from the real world. I just, I fully dive in to that, the, the world that, that is created. And I'm not drawing parallels. I'm sunk into that world. Don't care about our world while I'm living in this world movie world but this movie world you can't separate it like it's very clearly taking shots at the real world you know i do wish this boardroom they had more comedic actors uh it, it feels like just a bunch of stock white guys which i get i guess that's part of the joke right or part of the message just just like a homogenous group like, like literally look at the group like look at this it's like the same guy <laughs> repeated <laughs> I thought the cartoonish stuff would stay in the cartoonish world. And then the juxtaposition between that cartoonish world and the real world and Barbie's misapprehensions about the real world were gonna be the crux of the humor. But they brought some of the cartoonish elements over to the real world. Not a fan of that personally. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? Who are you? Thank you, um, Ruth. Ruth, thank you, Ruth. I feel like there's lore there that I'm missing. That one feels like someone's gonna be like, oh, Dylan, you didn't know this, but Ruth is actually the founder of the Barbie movement. There's something, there's something there. Oh, 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 key Get in! <laughs> this looks like a car commercial. Get in! Get in! Subaru. You have to hit it. How are you here? That's a car commercial! That shot is a car commercial. I you came, came for you. you! Those were your memories. Oh, you didn't die? Oh, those aren't medical bills. You're her real mother, huh? Ah! Car commercial. Car commercial. Car commercial. Car commercial. They've gone to Barbie land. When she's brought humans there with her, this could mean extremely weird things for our world. My, yeah, look, that you could have found. Look at this man. Look at this man. What are you jaw acting for? He looks like there is like an alien underneath his skin. And this is a human skin. I have never seen a jaw being flexed that hard. I think you could have found better comedic actors for these roles. And I think it would have improved these scenes when they're away from like the other standouts of the film. A podcast hosted by two wise trees or a Extremely weird things for our world. So just to illustrate this point, here's, here's the setup. They've gone to Barbie land. When she's brought humans there with her, this could mean extremely weird so things. So bringing humans to Barbie land is gonna lead to catastrophic consequences. Things that you can't even imagine. Like what? Like what? And then he answers. A podcast hosted by two wise trees. A podcast hosted by two wise trees. Trees, if you had a comedian on set in this role, I promise you he would have thought of something infinitely funnier. I'm uh, sorry, I don't want to say funnier because that would imply that this was on some level funny. I like Barbie Land better anyways. If we're not going to be doing like the confusion stuff about like her acclimating to the real world, then I prefer to be here because this set just is... It's brimming with life. <laughs> I enjoy this a lot. Coming for a beer. This is so much better than being president. <laughs> being a beer girl. That's. Oh, Ken. Ken came back. He brought the knowledge of the patriarchy 
with him to Barbie Land. And now all the guys are like, wait, this is so much better. So now they have a patriarchy in Barbie Land. <laughs> That's funny. So does each Barbie like have their own house? Mm -hmm. Where do the Kens stay? I don't know. Barbie Land? It's now Ken Land. We failed them. No, you failed me. Oh, music dropped out. Music picks in. A different, a different song. Out there I was somebody. I, this film is just funny. Right now, it's like 60-40 hit to miss ratio. So they're hitting more than they're missing. In just 48 hours, all the Kens will head to the polls and vote to change the Constitution. How's that feel? It is not fun, is it? All right. So for those slow on the uptake or who have not seen this movie and I've cut out too much, don't blame yourself, blame my editing. Ken here is almost teaching Barbie a lesson because he was such an afterthought in this world where women rule and hold all the power. No one thought about the men. Uh, similarly to our world, which is the juxtaposition where men are the ones that rule and have all the positions of power and women are more the afterthoughts. But in this Barbie land, since the men are forgotten about, now the men have the power and they are callously wielding it uh, almost in the same way and with the same disregard for the others as the women had when they were the ones in power. And it's interesting because at the beginning of the movie when, when Barbie was like, we're having a girl's night, you can't stay over and very oblivious to, to Ken's feelings. And then Ken walked away all sad and all shucks-like, and he literally did a shucks thing. Like, ah, shucks. It's, it was hard to tell how much like that actually affected Ken versus how much he's just playing it up for the joke. But now you can see with this look here, like there's a, a sense of care and compassion for her, but he felt he was mistreated before. So now he's just kind of getting his revenge and he's pushing it away. It's too late, Barbie. Every night is boys night. <laughs> yeah, and that was her line. Okay. So you're just gonna give up? Yes. <laughs> you know, I almost feel bad for you, but you are exactly- <laughs> Only playing Ken's favorite song. <laughs> you will, I will, well I will. <laughs> what? You're so pretty. I'm not stereotypical Barbie. Pretty. Note to the filmmakers, Margot Robbie is the wrong person to cast if you want to make this point. Narrator? Are you here? No, 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 You can't do that. If you want to have the narrator pop in from time to time to make jokes, that's fine. You can't go an hour and 10 minutes since the last time you did a voiceover intro of the world. You can't just pop in for one line. That just breaks like all sort of, like I guess you're not super immersed in this world because there's like this weird crossing over between reality versus Barbie land. But then I'll, like there's just a narrator there suddenly that just feels weird. Either the narrator has to repeatedly come in so that it's like, a, it's like an ever looming presence or you just don't do that or you stylize it. So it's like a very clear pausing of action as the narrator does, says its line. Like this, wow, what a great effect to show that the action is pausing for me to come in. We can also talk about this next moment where the mom gives an impassioned speech about the overbearing and often conflicting expectations placed on women, and that breaks the nearest Barbie out of her stupor. Oh shit, did you just get deprogrammed? Since recording this video, I've had a chance to listen to what other people had to say about Barbie finally, and I specifically wanted to listen to people who had an issue with Barbie, because when I watched it, there wasn't anything egregious, and I wanted to hear what people had to say about how it was like anti-man or, or negative towards men. To me, there's nothing in this film that has me up in arms, especially since this is a comedy film and you're going to play up certain stereotypes and certain generalizations for humor. There's a joke here where one of the Barbies feigns ignorance about not knowing how to use Photoshop so that while the Ken is explaining it to her, the Barbie that he was with is kidnapped and deprogrammed by the other Barbies. And honestly, it's true. Guys love to feel useful. Pretend to not know how to do something. Let him fix something. He will swell with confidence and joy. The way that they are stereotyping men in this movie is just so crude and accurate. <laughs> Another Ken is distracted by a Barbie asking him to explain the Godfather and he's excited about that. Another accurate stereotype. So yeah, even if you did want to make the argument that men are poorly represented in Barbie, women also could make the argument that they are poorly represented or underrepresented in other films. To the point where there's like literally a name for women in film who exist almost solely for the sake of men. The Bechdel test, where women don't talk to each other unless it's about a man. So yeah, those were just generally my thoughts. Agree, disagree, let me know in the comments. The final stage of our plan to turn the Kens against each other. Civil War. He took your house. He brainwashed your friends. He wants to control the government. True. <laughs> he is the villain, huh? I've been thinking. Mm -hmm. Kenland? Kendom. Kendom. Kendom Land. Land of... Land of... 
Come on in. I'll play the guitar at you. Oh, yay! <laughs> All right, I'm coming around. It's like 75, 25. Jokes that work, jokes that don't work. It's a funny film. It's a genuinely funny film. Oh, well, I still need you around. Well, I will. You don't. Come on. We might change, yeah. Well, I will. Well, I will. Well, I will. <laughs> Who are you texting? It's a beautiful song that you're playing. You play on their ego. Oh, Wait, but don't, but didn't, but didn't, hold on, I'm confused. So here, all the Barbies, they had a plan where they would pretend to be interested in the guy's song, and then they would feign interest in some other Ken. But if that were the case, then every Ken would just have a different girl come and listen to him, and then he'd be placated again, right? I don't get that, because they're all just trading spots. We turn them against each other. Like this guy, she's going to walk away, and then another one is going to come. And listen to him. I don't. Plot hole. <laughs> plot hole. <laughs> Doesn't seem to matter. Oh my god. <laughs> oh! <laughs> if there was like a really cool battle scene, let me see like a sick ass duel. There's nothing. There's nothing. Listen, listen. This movie very much is for the ladies. If you ever want to speak to men, duel. Duel. Just set up two powerful adversaries and have them go at it one on one. Mano we mano. Oh, here we go, here we go. Let's go. Oh! <laughs> okay, whoa, 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 whoa. This is different. I knew Ken had a musical number. I thought, I thought we were watching it. This is the extension. Were we supposed to vote today? What? Uh-oh. There's more to do, isn't there, Margo? We've reinstated the Barbie Land Constitution. <laughs> Don't look at me! Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. You wanna sit up for a minute? Okay, now here, here's where Margot Robbie delivers the message of the film. Hopefully the narrator doesn't come in and overspeak. It was hard writing stuff. I didn't love it. <laughs> to be honest, when I found out that patriarchy wasn't about horses, I lost interest anyway. <laughs> All right, 80, 20, 80, 20. I just don't know who I am without you. I only exist within the warmth of your gaze. Oh, shit, that's, that's romantic as hell. It's time <laughs> to discover who Ken is. Ken is. Ken? Me? Yes. Oh. Ken is me. Ken is me. Ken is me. Ken is me. <laughs> yeah. For a film that did humor very well, for the most part. I wish they would have cut to Alan being like, Ken is me, and then someone just quickly went, no, and he went, oh. But then again, I guess Alan isn't, um, he's not like the Kens. He's not like other guys. <laughs> he stands apart. I have an idea. Tell me your secret dream, child. What about ordinary Barbie? Maybe she's a mom, maybe she's not. She just has a flattering top, and she wants to get through the day feeling kind of good about herself. That's a terrible, terrible idea. <laughs> yeah, that's going to make money. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No! Yeah, that's going to make money. I want to sell you ordinary Barbie. That's like that's like if I was watching a sports game and they're like, we're going to put a bunch of people who aren't very good at the game into the game and you're going to watch. No! You want to see the extraordinary. You want to buy the extraordinary. Uh, ordinary Barbie, I love it. No, no. So it's just like a, it's just like an everyday Barbie? Like, why would you want that? You buy something because it's cool. Like, for, I mean, from like a moral perspective, it's nice. But from a product perspective, no way. You're Ruth from Mattel. Ruth Handler, inventor of Barbie. Okay. I don't really feel like Barbie anymore. You are not the sum of your expectations. You just are. How did you not learn this lesson, Margot? Okay. They're creepy. They're so creepy. No, don't, don't participate. Oh my god, it's a cult. They're a cult. You understand that humans only have one ending. Ideas live forever. Humans, not so much. You know that, right? Vampires live forever. Not relevant, but... Barbie ends in a very pretty way. Barbie is taken with the Barbie creator to this in-between world, and Barbie wants to become human. I love this location and the ambient backtrack of music. Margot brings a lot of emotion with her performance. It's shot well, interspersed with home movie clips that just drip with nostalgia. This scene had all the elements to just wreck me emotionally. And it didn't. For me, it goes back to the quiet moments. This film is very entertaining. It has great pacing. It flows very well outside of the Mattel scenes. It does comedy very well. Again, outside of the Mattel scenes. But if the end of Barbie's story is her desire to leave this false life behind to where nothing changes in Barbie Land, 
I'm not really sure where I belong anymore. And she wants to exchange that for the chaotic ups and downs, the highs and lows of high school football. Oh, so, uh, sorry, highs, highs and lows of life. If that's what she's seeking, then I think that these scenes should have delved into the beauty and fragility of life that Barbie's never experienced. She could have seen she's missing out on something and then covet that something. We get it when she's on the bench looking at people. You can see the beauty of new emotions that she's feeling. This is wonderful. The conversation with the lady on the bench, which is it's not a conversation. It's just a statement and then a reply and then a lot of eye contact. You're so beautiful. I know it. And then this scene in the kitchen, which is, again, filled with a lot of silence. Two hours later. These two scenes should have had Barbie desiring being human as the crux of the dialogue. This scene here is instead used for Ruth to say that Barbie's perfect just the way she is, which is a fine message, but it feels like that message barely brushes against Barbie's final conflict in her heart. The feeling of being inadequate and wanting to be human are two different feelings. And I think that they should have honed in on one or the other as the core message because her feelings of inadequacies feel like the bulk of her personal journey only for her final moments to be about her wanting to leave the static life behind, the static life of Barbie land that never changes. If this final moment was about Barbie accepting herself, not needing to be perfect, then it would have been a moving ending. Or on the opposite side, if these scenes before would have been filled with uh, more about Margot and what she's missing, she's not real and she's looked at as a toy who doesn't understand feelings and true emotions, it also would have been a deeply moving end. I kind of felt like they had like two messages and then they couldn't commit to either one fully. And then both of them only felt half fleshed out. Two other things I wanted to bring up, Ryan Gosling, he is so funny, so good as Ken, but my God, he went for comedy with every line. Every scene. In these final moments, it's really about him. It's less about Barbie. You can drop two or three jokes into this conversation, but the rest of it has to be deep introspection and serious. But it's it's all jokes. The whole thing. I'm just another blonde guy who can't do flips. The film made room for Ken to have his growth moments, and I think it was squandered because they tried too hard for humor. It just kind of cheapens his final moments, you know? And if you're gonna go for that, which they clearly did, where it's like Ken is having his, I'm Kenuff. You wanted the moment, so commit to the moment and forego some of the jokes that you would normally do in this final scene. As soon as I saw him do this, <laughs> Don't look at me! I was like, oh no, <laughs> oh no. I, they're not gonna take this seriously. Also, the, the mom and daughter, that felt like it didn't go anywhere. I would have loved to see some growth from the, or, or some change from the girl. She thrashed Barbie about all the ways that Barbie is awful, and that sets up well for her to realize that Barbie may have some, some messaging that's unintentionally negative, but there are some positives there as well. To have this scene, and then even at the end of the scene where the girl kind of looks a little bit like she feels bad about tearing Barbie down so hard, it felt like that was gonna come full circle, and then that just never did. The film was a great time though, the, from the sets, the pacing, the stylization of everything, the performances, not all, but most, you know which ones I'm, I'm talking about. It was a good time, and I think that's the best thing you could say about a movie. It's made for entertainment, it made like a billion dollars, so clearly people had a good time watching this. It also did comedy better than, than most films do, in my opinion. In the end, I think uh, the only issues I had with the film are the, the ending of the personal journeys. The mom and the daughter, Barbie and Ken, I feel like all four of those journeys were either incomplete or a little bit muddled at the end. I'd love to hear your opinion. If you've watched Barbie, let me know in the comment section. Thank you again to Beam for sponsoring. Link is in the description. If you guys are trying to get some good sleep. And I'll see you guys next time. Toodles.